Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to take a quick look at a common beginner issue and how to fix it. So it's the use of effects. Now when you first start sequencing things in Cubase uh, you often go to the audio inserts part of your inspector and then put an effect in here so we could put in a delay or whatever and so on and then you end up putting on one on each part etc to have those uh, four parts with effects on in this case. Now that might be what you want but often it's not and the reason it's not is firstly because you often want to have a common effect between multiple tracks so you would want to have let's say a reverb which would be a reverb applied to all of these tracks now while you could click on each track and then go to uh, roomworks and put let's say roomworks on each track that wouldn't be the great thing to do the reason there's two reasons for that really uh, the first one is that if you want to change the uh, reverb that you're using, you have to go to the editor on each one. So if I just show you what that would look like. So let's say we've got Roomworks on this track and we've got to put Roomworks on this one as well and so on. We've got a reverb for each one. So if we want to change the reverb on all of them, we have to do four edits. So we're going to have to change that four times, which is long-winded. So what we are going to do instead is use an effects channel. So I'm actually going to remove that from both of those there. And we're going to set up an effects channel and look at how you use that. Now, the first thing we do is right click and add FX channel track here. And I'm going to pick exactly the same effect as we were using. So just Reamworks, which most people have. And I'm going to call it Reverb here uh, and then click add track. So there's my uh, Reverb. I'll just kill Solo, which from where I was playing around before I set this up. And at the moment, that will do nothing. So if we play this part, we can hear there is no reverb that's been applied to it. So there's a second thing we need to do. And what we need to do is to send some of each one of these four tracks to the reverb. There's a couple of places we can do it. We can either do it in the inspector or we can do it in the mixer. So we're going to look at both. Uh, in the inspector, it appears down, in this case, on audio sends because I'm using instrument tracks. So click there and then we click the triangle here and we're going to pick reverb. So you can see the reverb track appears there. There's two more things we need to do. We need to turn it on using the power button at the top left and then pick a level. So I'm just going to pick my arbitrary level of minus 6 dB at the moment. Um, and you could do that for each track here. It's much easier and often quicker to do it in the mixer as well. So if we get the send section expanded we can see that there now I'm going to do it to the other three tracks at the same time by selecting them holding down or clicking on the first track holding down shift and selecting the other ones and then using Q link which you can see is turned on here so if that's turned on anything you do to one of these tracks will be done to all of them so then it's just a case of picking reverb you see they all three appear we can turn all three on and then I'll put all of them to minus six now we will have reverb on all of the tracks and if we want to edit it it's simply a case of editing the reverb which is an insert on the reverb effects track so i can just click that click that e there uh, and now i can play around with this let's put a now another thing you generally want to do is to make your mix a hundred percent when you're on an effects track because then when you come to changing this level here, you're only going to be affecting the reverb and not the direct level. And there you go. That's how to use effects tracks efficiently and quickly. If you've enjoyed these videos and found them useful, then subscribe by clicking on the MTT logo in the bottom of the screen now. Also visit musictechtuition.com for tips, tricks and advice, as well as information about the books I've written, The Complete Guide to Music Technology Using Cubase 9 and Music Tech A Level Using Cubase 9. These are a great resource whether you're just getting started or you've been working for a few years now. The information in them will allow you to take your sequencing, recording and production to the next level and give you a well-rounded grounding in all areas of music technology.